Why don't you go ahead and stand to your feet this morning? How many of you feel like we need a do-over for 2022? Anybody? <laughs> you don't get to do that, but I feel like I need one, right? Between uh, COVIDs and everything else that's been going on. I'll tell you what, uh, make your way to the front and we're going to open up in prayer together right around the altar today. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, yes. She, he, yes. Messed her up. Yeah, Ty's mom, they, they took her to the hospital in... Uh, we definitely need to uh, to pray for her. Boy, good-looking group. Thanks for being in the house of the Lord this morning. Would you slip your hands up with me? More importantly, will you lift your voices up to the one who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could even ask or think. And we're going to pray to him, and we're going to believe God for the ministry of the Holy Spirit this morning. And then we're going to worship the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I, Lord, I feel like a new man being in the house of the Lord this morning. God, if no one else needed this, I need this. I need your people. Lord, I need your church. I need the body of Christ. I need the fellowship. I need the move of the Holy Spirit. I need the move of God in my life. And Father, I thank you that you've allowed us to come together today for the purpose of lifting up and magnifying the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God, I just pray that, uh, Lord, when we, uh, <coughs> when we begin to praise, Lord, I pray the Spirit of God, as our praise goes up, I pray the Spirit of God would move out and God would meet everyone at their point of need. Lord, I want to pray specifically this morning for Ty's mom. God, I just pray, Lord, that she would know right now, wherever she's at in the hospital room, that she would know that there are people that are praying for her. I pray that she senses the move of God in her body right now. Lord, I ask you for your healing on her behalf in Jesus' name. Father, I just pray now you'd help us to lay aside the cares of the week. And Lord, for these next few moments together, get our eyes on Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Put your hands together and give him praise. I'll tell you what, on your way back to your seats, I know it's been a while. Uh, if, you don't, if, if you forgot about somebody, just introduce yourself on the way back to your seats. And we're going to worship the Lord. join me we're going to sing of the goodness of God I love you Lord I love you Lord oh your mercy never fails me and all my days I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake until it am I here
this morning. There is resurrection power in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, we stand in awe of who you are and all that you've done and all that you will forever do in our lives. Lord, we thank you this morning. As we just prepare for the snow that just reminds us that our sins can be forgiven and we can be made white as the snow that is about to fall, Lord. As we look up at the stars and see the beauty of your creation, Lord, we're just reminded that everywhere we look, we can get a glimpse of your face this morning. Lord, we just thank you for the privilege that we have to come into this house and worship such an amazing God. Lord, I just pray that we would get a glimpse of you. Hold your beauty in this house this morning.
I just wanted to do that song for Sharon this morning. And there's a saint that's passed away this week. And he's seen the beautiful face of our Savior. Church is what we're all striving for. The bride is going to come together and we're going to sing some. We're all going to join around that throne and sing that song, and we're going to gaze on his beautiful face. Lord, you are so beautiful. And we long for that day when we won't behold you, as the Bible says, through a veil darkly, but we're going to see you face. next song, I want you to understand that yes, heaven is a destination that someday we're all going to, but I want you to understand that heaven starts the moment that you place your faith in Jesus Christ. Sharon's dad lived a long, faithful life to the Lord, and the day that you put your faith in Christ, you start a journey, and that journey is toward heaven. And every day you take a step closer and you just keep building that relationship a little bit more, a little bit more, day after day, year after year, decade after decade. And at that moment, when you breathe your last breath, it's just going to be a really small step to complete that journey, that journey that we're all on. So I just pray, if you don't know him today, if you haven't started that journey, heaven is here right now. You can experience the start of your journey to seeing him face to face, to bringing heaven, a little bit of heaven on this earth this morning. And if you haven't placed your faith in him, I would invite you to do that. Jesus, I call up salvation. your heart beats and 
tether it to mine. The surgery is worth it to get below the surface and open up.
atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. And the evidence is all around that the Spirit of atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here and the evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord is here overflow Kingdom. 
So I feel like there's some people in here today and me at the start that needed reminding that the presence of the Lord is available and in the presence of the Lord there is healing, there is hope. And, and the songs and the talk about Virgil, the Lord is saying lift your eyes up to the hills right where your help comes from. So shifting our gaze to Jesus Christ this morning. I want to remind, I want to tell you a recent story of the power of the presence of the Lord. And I'll just tell you a little bit because Janet Varney's got even more to tell. But Janet Varney was very sick with COVID. And I saw her on, uh, we FaceTimed, kind of kept in touch with each other. <laughs> and I looked at her on FaceTime and I said, I, I was like, she is so sick like emergency room sick jason we i gotta get in the car and i'm gonna take my friend janet varney to the emergency room there was no air moving in her lungs and so i got in the car and i prayed on the way there and i'm like lord come with me right like like come with me and i'm all, i'm thinking yeah come with me to the emergency room me and janet varney yeah so um I walk in the room and the, there was like this like fear and, and, and it was a, like a hopelessness. I've seen this a hundred times with COVID, by the way. Fear takes lives. And so I, I leaned into little Janet Varney who has been praying in the spirit all day. And I prayed all the way there because the presence of the Lord is available to us. All we have to do is ask. And I don't know if Janet realizes this, but I leaned in and I held her little hand and I said, and she's saying it right now. Yes, the word yes. I said, Janet, you're going to live. And she said, yes. Yes. Not maybe. Not I'll try. Or I, today's culture, nobody can commit. All right? It is always, well, I'll try, or maybe, or I think I can. Right, Chris? Yes? Chris is a yes kind of guy. He says yes. No, it wasn't a maybe. It was, you're going to live. And she said, yes, yes, absolutely yes. And that is what God wants from us is an absolutely yes to the presence and power of God. And when I was a little girl and I was seeking the gift of the Holy Spirit, I'll never forget the lady who prayed with me. She said, baby, just say yes. Yes, Jesus, yes. Just say yes. Yes to salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Yes to healing. Yes to the presence of Jesus. Not maybe, not well. No, it's a yes. And Janet Varney breathed in the power of God. And within 20 minutes, she was a breathing, live, healed woman. It was incredible. I watched the power and the presence of the Lord go into her home and breathe life into her. She is alive because the power and the presence of a mighty Savior. So you need healing today. You need saved today. Go for Janet Varney. He can do it for you today. He can do it for Pam in the name of Jesus. All we got to do is say yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes.
The Lord changes everything, church. He changes everything. And when you feel his presence, when the water is stirred, it's not just stirred for one or the first one that can get in the pool. God stirs the waters of your life. And God stirs the waters of your family and your home and your loved ones. Do you want to step in? Do you want to step in? If you, need a, if you need the Lord to minister to you this morning, or if you have a loved one you need the Lord to minister to, make your way to this altar this morning, and we're going to pray together with you. If you need to step into the water, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is where it happens. This changes it all right here. All right, church, you know what to do now. Come on. Man, this is... Sometimes it's your morning, sometimes it's for someone else. But we're the family of God. We're all in this together. You find someone to throw an arm around. You find someone to hold up their hand. You hold them up, you strengthen them. We're gonna pray for Cody this morning. Someone gather around Jackie. All right, if you're out there, stretch your hands this way. This is the day of your miracle. 
Heavenly Father, God, Lord, I feel like it's been forever. Lord, just to be in the house of the Lord, to rest in your presence, to see God move, to see miracles happen. God, I don't have all the answers, but I know that you're the answer. I don't have the strength and I don't have the power, but I know that you are all powerful. You're all knowing, because you are God. You created it all. Lord, you created it. You know how to sustain it. You know how to care for us. God, you are the Almighty. God, I pray that healing would come where healing is needed. The answer would come, Lord, where the answer is needed. Lord, the miracle would come. Lord, you are the miracle worker. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Fill us full of the Holy Ghost and power. Fill us full of your word. Fill us full of faith. Lord, may we be faith-filled people this morning. May we be Holy Ghost-filled people this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, it's a new day. It's a new time. It's a new hour. Lord, you're raising up a body of Christ. You're raising up an army. Thank you, Jesus. Break your people free. Break the chains. I pray that prison doors fly open. And God, people walk free. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray you break the power of fear off of people's lives. Thou has not given us the spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you would give peace of mind. Thank you, my God. Thank you, God. Lord, I'm just believing that things are changing right now. In this atmosphere, I believe that anything can happen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, glory, 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 glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's right, Lord. Amen. That's right. How many of you believe that God showed up this morning? Amen. Put your hands together and give him praise. That's all I ever pray for on a Sunday morning. God, if you're there. God, if you're there. And if God doesn't come, nothing's happening. It's not in the pastor. It's not in anyone out here. It's all the Lord. It's all Jesus. Why don't you hug someone around the neck and you can return to your seats.
Ushers, would you come? And we're going to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. How many of you can say this morning, man, I just needed this. I just needed this this morning. Amen. Roger, would you pray? Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to receive this morning's tithes and offerings, and uh, if you would bless the Lord with your giving this morning. While, uh, while they are collecting the offering, immediately after church, uh, I need to see every man in here back in the youth room. We're going to meet back there for five minutes Every man in here, five minutes back in the youth room, and uh, then we will uh, we'll turn you loose. You guys, go ahead. Where's, uh, where's uh, Patty Friesner's? Patty's still in here? Oh, that's right. They had a water break or something. <laughs> Hey, I was, no, the reason I, I was going to thank uh, Patty's kids. Patty's kids came in this morning and uh, they had me a big package of my Welch's fruit snacks. I just want to make sure that I recognize them this morning. They must have knew they, they must have knew I needed them, right? <laughs> and there, hey, j- just so you know, it says real fruit on the package. Totally healthy, right, Jody? No. No. No, no, we are not doing. Hey, uh, by the way, you talk about teenagers. Uh, they are this evening. How do you say this? They're going to go hatchet throwing. The, knives and axes. Man, this sounds. Do we get to choose the target? There are consent forms. I wonder why. <laughs> if, you, if you want your teenager to be throwing an axe around this afternoon, then see Jody immediately after. This. You go throw knives too? Yes. We have a few of us who text it out loud. And although it's about the So how did Lana do last week? Don't <laughs> meet at the church at five o'clock. All right, young people, you can be dismissed to head back to class. Archery, thank you. Archery tomorrow night.
come on up here. I just wanted to add a little bit of what Jody was talking about, like when she came to my house, but I was going to tell you what happened that led up to that day, but the COVID was really, really, it was real. It was real. Um, but that morning that, and Jody came that evening, that morning I was sitting on the corner of the couch wrapped up. We had been to the ER to get tested. My husband and I both had got tested. And they, the doctor literally put, they put us in a consult room. And I said, Dan, why are we in a consult room? And he said, I don't know, but there's a Bible there. And I'm like, oh, well, okay. So she comes in, she sits way over there. She's totally covered, like we really have a plague. And she says to us, you have COVID, but there is nothing that you that we can do because you have not been vaccinated. And I said, you know, I'm looking at Dan and I said, you know, like the fear is already like, you know, what do we do? And I said, well, what are, what, what are we supposed to do? And she said, uh, we, there's nothing we can do, literally nothing we can do for you. So I'm in shock already and I said, well, what about all the coughing and the mucus and stuff? She said, well, you can go get over the counter mu mucinex. And I said, okay, well, well, what about, you know, I feel nauseated. What, well, oh, well, we can give you um, some Sofran. And I'm like, okay, well, what else? I mean, what do we need to do? And she's like, you can go take the antibodies within 10 days, like really non-caring, I thought. So we go pick up the... Dan runs in and gets the uh, over-the-counter stuff, and we go home, and that's literally all we have. But we have Jesus Christ. Amen. There you go. So I can tell you that we had nothing. Um, friends like Teresa Billings and Anna or um, Christina got together, and they brought some meds and stuff for us. So call the, or the family doctor calls for Dan to reset an appointment, and I told her, I said, the doctor said, there's nothing they can do for us. What, can we come in? And she's like, no, there's nothing we can do for you. You have to go to the ER if you need anything because you haven't been vaccinated. They were told this twice. So pretty much we're a little bit older. So go home. To me, it was like, go home and die. If that's what, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing we can do. That's how I took it. So um, I knew that I did not want to go to the hospital. I, know, I did not. I'd already heard so many bad stories about going into the hospital. I did not want to be. Dan dropped me off at the ER, and that was it. So that morning, I think it was three or four days later, and I kept getting worse. Um, I was sitting on the corner of the couch, and I was all wrapped up, and all I had was these few little meds there. And I f it, it was like 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. I think it was about 4 o'clock in the morning. And I began to think on the Lord, and the scripture came to my mind. This is why you need the Spirit of the Lord. And this is why you need to read your Bible when you're young. Read your King James Version so you know what the scripture says. And the scripture came to me about David. I can't quote it verbatim, but David said, Lord, early in the morning will I direct my prayers towards you. And I began to cry uncontrollably, cry. And I began to speak in tongues, and I, it lasted for a while. So the day goes on, and Dan's like, Jan, you know, you you got to get up. you got to walk, you, you know, and it's trying to, you know, keep me moving. But Anna calls in the afternoon. She FaceTimes. By then, I'm, like, gasping for breath, I felt like I was, like, you know, and she's like, Gang, Anna, are you, you, you're going to be okay. Are you going to be? I'm like, Anna, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So then Jody didn't get to tell you, but Jody was running in Amanda, that someplace she hardly ever runs, she said. And she says that Anna comes to her mind. And she told Jason, I, I don't know, but Anna, I feel a burden for Anna. There's something going on. And said, so Jason said, okay. 
And she said, they, they start running, and they run right into Anna. And Anna says, there's something, Jody, my grand, Gingan is really sick. So she said, well, let's FaceTime her. So after this, this scripture that Pastor Chris told me probably two years ago, we were talking about paying tithes and offerings. I think we were decorating for Christmas or something. And he says to me, but Janet, do you know what the scripture says after that in Malachi? And I said, no, what does it say? And he said, the Bible says he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And I clung to that, and I kept saying, God, you said, you said, you said, you said. And I kept quoting the promises of God. And Jody FaceTimes me that evening and said, I'm coming over. I'm going to come and see what's going on. That, see, the, whole, the Holy Spirit that whole day orchestrated that move of God. The scriptures came to my mind. And you quote the scriptures to God. God is for us. He is not against Amen. us. Amen. That's mm, praise God. Boy, the Lord does that all the time. I'm telling you, God does it over and over and over and over again. God will take care of his people. Amen? Amen. I want you to know that. God takes care of his people. Boy, uh, I have... I, I cannot... Uh, I cannot probably get it out enough, uh, what I feel in my heart... Uh, concerning what God is going to do for us in 2022. And uh, specifically, those of you that were not here a couple weeks ago, the Lord gave me one word, and that was more. More. And I have, I have been, ever since I heard that, I have been searching the scriptures, and God has just been giving me stuff right and left, right and left. And if you weren't here, I, I'm not going to re-preach... Uh, uh, I'm not going to re-preach the sermon, but I want, I want to just say this. Uh, we started out in the book of Acts, and Apollos is preaching, and uh, the Bible says he was preaching the word accurately, and then along comes a husband and wife team by the name of Aquila and Priscilla, and uh, they hear Apollos preaching, and they take him aside, and the Bible says that they expounded unto him the way of God more accurately. And then Paul comes along and he finds the believers that Apollos has won to the Lord and uh, he has a conversation with them. And, uh, you know, he said, well, what were you baptized into? And he said, John's baptism. And he said, uh, that was good, but I want you to know that there is more. And he baptized them in the name of Jesus. And they came up out of the water. And there was even more because he baptized them in the Holy Ghost. And what I'm trying to say to you and what we're going to be learning throughout the year is... There is always, always, always more in the Lord. No one will ever exhaust the things of God. And so this morning, I want to preach a, a message I've simply entitled, More is More and You Can Have It. I want to look at uh, 2 Peter chapter uh, 1. We're going to read about five verses here. Uh, it says, by his divine power, God has given us everything. Look at this. God has given us everything that we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. Can you say amen? That's what you were hanging on to, Miss Janet. Those great and precious promises. 
These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patience and endurance and patience and endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. Now look at this. The more, everyone say more. Few of you, let's try it again. Everybody, more. The more you grow like this, the what? More productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Anybody in here know what the definition of more is? Jason took the youth to the back. Remember in, in, in math, and what, what do they call those? You, you've got the, the greater than symbol and the less than symbol. You remember that in school? And then have two, you know, they, they, give, you a, they give you a number on the left-hand side, and they give you the number on the right-hand side, and they would... Then they would say, you know, something like is, is 35 more than 47, you know, or is it less than? And, you know, they would have that little symbol there and you would have to, uh, you know, you would have to work that out. Which is greater than? Well, the definition of more is a greater or an additional amount. So whatever you have now concerning the things of God, the Bible is telling us that we can have a greater or an additional amount. And here's what you need to know. Your starting point is not important. What is important is wherever you are at right now in your relationship with God, in your walk with the Lord, what's important is that you know that you can move up to the next level. So where you start is not important. What you need to know is wherever you are at, you can move up. Now, I do this with couples all the time. They come to me. Here, boy, Chris's, your, your wife is not, Chris's wife is not here, so I can talk to him and he won't get in trouble, right? But if, if Chris and Jenny were to come to me, uh, I, I would say, uh, they, they walk into my office, Pastor, can we, can we talk to you? You know, things are not going real well. And I would probably say something to them. Number one, I'd probably look at Chris and say, Chris, you know, uh, you know scale one to ten, why, rate your marriage for me. And Chris would probably, I just know this by experience, Chris would probably say, ah, I think my marriage is about a seven. And Jenny over there, I would see her face and she'd go, And Jenny would probably go, uh, you know, I, I, you know, probably about a three. And Chris would go, what? You know, because most of the time the guys, you know, are, you know, we're just oblivious to what's, we're just oblivious to what's going on, right? And I'd probably go, Chris, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're probably delusional, buddy, because you're probably, your relationship's probably down there about a three where, where Jenny where Jenny said it was, right? And so, 
Usually I would ask them, Kelly, I would say, okay, so your marriage is at a three. We're not worried about a nine. We're not worried about a ten. We're at a three. Chris, what do we need to do? What do you think, Jenny, what do you think we need to do to get your marriage to a four? You know, man, a ten's out of the question at that point. An eight is out of the question at that point. A five is probably out of the question at that point. If your relationship is at a three, we're just worried about getting it to a four. So what can we do to move you forward? What do he say? Roses. Roses never hurt. But Dan, what happens when the ro- what happens when the roses fade and <laughs> My point is this. Wherever you are at in your relationship with God, Because I'm sure there are some people in here this morning, you go, man, I am just not feeling it. You know, God and I, you know, I feel so distant from God. We're just, you know, just not on the same page. Uh, I haven't heard the voice of God in some time. And my relationship with God is somewhere down there around a two. Then you need to hear me. You can have more. See, you're not worried about getting it to a seven. You're not worried about getting it to an eight. If your relationship with God is is at a two, all I care about right now is that we move that thing to a three. And maybe there's some of you in here, you go, man, life is good right now. Me and the Lord, I mean, we're just walking hand in hand. Uh, You know, I think we are at about an eight Well, praise God, you are at an eight. I am with you. But the point is, there is something after the eight. And you may say, well, we're at a nine, or you may even go to a ten. It makes no difference. There's something after the ten, and there's something after the eleven, and there's something after the twelve. What I'm trying to get you to see is, wherever you are at, You can always move up higher in God. Wherever you are at, you can always have more. Just like your marriage relationship can always be better, your relationship with God can always be better. You can always have more. Now, Chris and Jenny have never been to my office, and I'm sure their marriage is way over a three. Even if you move from a three to a four, that doesn't seem like much, but it is still what? It's still more, isn't it? It's still greater. It's still an additional amount. Now, Sharon is uh, Sharon's back in class this morning. If you were to come over to my house, and you were just blessed enough to stop in at the right day, at the right time, and Sharon, let, let me tell you, Sharon fixes boneless barbecue spare ribs. Mmm, that's right, Kelly. Mmm. Man, if, if you just happened to pick the right day to stop by, and she was fixing some of her world-famous boneless barbecued spare ribs, I guarantee 
you would sink your teeth into those. And when you were done, you would probably look at Sharon and ask, can I have some more? And knowing Sharon, you know what she would say. She would say, you can have as much as you what? Can I have more? She would say, you can have as much as you want. And that's why the psalmist said in 34 and 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I said, taste and see that the Lord is good. What's he saying? You try it, you'll like it. You try him out, I guarantee you will like it. And guess what? You'll be asking, taste and see that the Lord is good. And it will leave you asking for more, which is exactly what God wants. Because you can have more, which makes you what? Want more, which makes you what? Want more. You cannot exhaust God or his storehouse of blessings. Because, look, I dig into the barbecue spare ribs. Guess what? I want more. And I get more. And I want more. Now, eventually, I flounder on... Barbecue spare ribs. But God is like that. You try him out and you will want more, which makes you want more, which makes you want more, which makes you want even more. God is so good. There are so many people Especially young people. They pray the sinner's prayer. And then it's like, okay, I prayed the magic prayer, asked Jesus into my heart, asked him to forgive me. My sin. Now what? Now what? Or I've prayed the prayer. And then I've heard this. Is this all there is to it? I mean, I, I, I prayed. I asked Jesus into my heart. Is this it? And the answer is what? Absolutely not. No. That is not all there is to it. You are just getting started. Those of you that know the Lord and you've walked with him any amount of time, you know that you are just getting started on the most fantastic journey that can ever, ever, ever be lived because there is more. You can be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You can operate in the gifts of the Spirit. You can take an active part in the army of God. You can fulfill your mission of the Great Commission. You can disciple others. You can be a worshiper. You can allow God to use you in ministry. And so much more. Start where you're at. Go for more and believe that God wants you to have it. I've had people say, you know, being a Christian is so boring. And I said, follow me for one week and you will be anything but bored. Being a Christian is the most exciting journey on the planet.
every one of you in here that serve the Lord, <coughs> you know that with a phone call, you know out there doing street preaching on the corner, Amy, somebody walks up to you and in a moment's time, it all changes. Somebody asks you a question. Somebody says, pray. Pray for me. I want to give you two examples this morning to illustrate what I'm talking about. One from the Old Testament, one from the New Testament. Both, both of these you will recognize who I'm talking about. Prominent figures in the Old Testament, prominent figures in the New Testament. Let me start out with a young shepherd boy by the name of David. As a young boy, not even a teenager yet, as a young boy, he was given the responsibility of tending to his father's flocks. He would guide them to green pastures. He would lead them to still waters. And occasionally, he would have to fend off predators. And the Bible doesn't, it doesn't tell us exactly when, and the Bible doesn't tell us exactly where. But somewhere out there on a Judean hillside, this young shepherd boy met the chief shepherd. And night after night, this young boy would fellowship with God. He talked to God about everything. He wrote psalms. And sang hymns to the Lord. As he grew, so did his desire for more. You know the story, he defeated Goliath with a sling and a stone. He was chosen to play the harp for King Saul. He became a, a, a commander in Saul's army and eventually, he became Israel's greatest king. But here's what I want you to know this morning. These promotions that God gave him were no accident. They did not just happen. It wasn't a, a product of David being in the right place at the right time. Watch this. What we see outwardly is the byproduct of what was going on inwardly between David and God. Outwardly, David was defeating the giant. Outwardly. But inwardly, inwardly, David was singing. I want more, I want more, I want more. Won't you pour it out? I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more. Won't you pour it out? Why? Why do you think David... was chosen to play the harp for King Saul. The Bible said that he would play the harp and it would soothe the king. Saul didn't know the tune. But what song do you think that David was playing on his harp? 
What was he telling God when he went into battle? What prayer did he pray when God handed him the keys to the castle? I want more, I want more, I want more. Won't you pour it out? I want more, I want more, I want more. Can you see him? He's playing the harp. He's probably singing under his breath. I want more, I want more, I want more. Won't you pour it out? He's playing the harp. He's heading into battle. Ain't nobody could beat that guy. If you want to be on the winning side, you better get in David's army. Charge. I want more, I want more, I want more. God said, you're going to be the next king. Hand it in the keys. David said, I want more, I want more. What was the first thing that David did when he became king? You remember? Remember the ark had been stolen. First thing David did, we're going down and we're getting the ark back. On his way down there, on his way down, you know what he's singing? I want more, I want more. I want more, I want more. Won't you pour it out? His whole life, his whole life, he couldn't get enough of God. And God said, there's a man after my heart right there. A man after my own heart. David could not get enough of God. Wasn't perfect, was he? Wasn't a perfect man. But he couldn't get enough of God in his life. And the cry of his heart was always for more. When you ever get to the point that you are satisfied with what you have... Or you believe that you have all there is. You will cease to grow beyond that level. And life becomes mundane and boring. There's always more you can have. If you're at a 9, you're at a 10 even. There's always more to have. Let's flip over to the New Testament here. Let me, let me talk real quick about uh, the Apostle Paul. The great apostle Paul. Do you realize that Paul lived his entire Christian life looking over his shoulder because someone was always after him? Anybody in here ever had anybody in here ever has someone after you? <laughs> yeah, probably don't want to admit it, do you? This guy lived his whole life. Every morning when he woke up, he had to check it out. Throughout the day, believe me, he's always looking over his shoulder. Someone always trying to track him down. When he went to bed tonight, he better be looking under the covers. Because they are after him. Let me, let, let me read to you. Man, what a faith-filled man of God this is. But let me tell you about his life. See if anybody wanted to trade places with Paul. They took up stones and they stoned him till they thought he was dead. They left him alone and he got back up. He was whipped, the Bible said, multiple times. Five times he received 39 lashes. Do you know the reason why they didn't give the, the 40th lash? 39 brought you to the point of death. The 40th lash would kill a man. 
And five times they brought him to the point of death by giving him 39 lashes. Three times he was beaten with rods. Three times he was shipwrecked. Now this is Paul's statement here. Paul said that he lived, he lived with weariness and pain. He had sleepless nights. He went hungry and thirsty. He said that he endured the cold without enough clothing. And beyond all of that, he said he carried the burden of the churches that he had established or he had ministered to. Now, do you know what Paul's response was to all that? Paul said, I'm content. I'm content with what I have. I'm content with what I've got. And I'm content with where I'm at. I'm content. How could Paul live his life looking over his shoulder? Someone always trying to kill him. And say, I'm content. Because in Romans chapter 8, Paul said this. What we go through here is nothing compared to what we're going to get over there. Now listen, what we're going to get over there must be awfully good. Because if the beatings that he took here are not worthy to be compared to what we're going to get over there, over there's got to be pretty good. If all of the shipwrecks, if all the going hungry, all the sleepless nights, all the burdens of the churches, the stonings, everything that that man went through, he said that's not even worthy to talk about. Nothing to say. I'm content with what I've got here because I know when I get over there, it's all going to be worth it. Whatever you go through down here, whatever the persecution, whatever the burden that you carry, it's nothing compared to what we're going to get over there. It's not even worth talking about. Not even worth fretting about. That's how good it's going to be over there. Now I'm not done. Because <clears throat> see, the more, the more that life threw at him, and the more the devil threw at him, the more he cried out to God, asking for what? More. Look at Philippians chapter 3. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, but wait, I count them as rubbish that I may, be, uh, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousnesses which from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, look, 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 look here, that I may know him, what's he implying? I may know him even more than I know him now. And when tomorrow comes, I want to know him even more then. And whatever I go through, whatever beating I take, 
whatever, you know, they may try to track me down, but I count it as rubbish. I don't even want to talk about it because I want to know him even more. More. Paul spent his whole life, his whole Christian life, seeking after more. Do you know what his reward was? Do you know what his reward was for seeking after the more? He wrote about 13 books of the New Testament. One time he was caught up to the third heaven and received revelation that was so powerful he couldn't even talk about it. And at the end of his life, he said that there is a prize awaiting me, a crown of righteousness. When I leave this life, he said, I've got a crown waiting on me. Why? Because he was always seeking after more of God. Now wait. Dan, he didn't stop there. He said, not only is there a crown waiting for me. Uh, 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 right. Us too. To all those that love his appearing, all of those that are looking for the second coming, all of those that are living for Jesus, all of those who are waiting, all of those who the cry of their heart is like, Paul, give me more, give me more, give me more, give me more. And there is a crown of life waiting, a crown of righteousness. God, give me more. Do you remember the story in the Bible where, here, here we go again, they got uh, Paul and Silas got thrown in, Philippian got thrown in the flipping jail. Man, they're all shackled together, can't move. Dreary, dirty prison. And about midnight, Paul looked at Silas, said, let's sing. Let's sing. Man, I, I've speculated my whole Christian life. I wonder what they sang. But because I'm preaching a sermon, I'm going to tell you what they were singing this morning. I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more. Won't you pour it out? I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more. Oh, won't you pour it out? And about midnight, God hears those men in that jail singing that song. God, I want more. And the more showed up and the jail could not contain the more. And the place blew apart and Paul and Silas went free. More. I want more. What is more? It's a greater amount than what you've got now. One more scripture and I'm going to close. Luke eleven nine. 9. You know this one. So I say to you, ask... Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Do you know 
look at that. This is the only place in the Bible where God doesn't care if you get greedy. You just keep asking. Right? And you keep seeking. And you keep knocking. And you ask as much as you want to ask. And you seek as much as you want to seek. And you knock as much as you want to knock. So you go for more. And then you go for more. And you'll want more, which makes you go for more. And you want more. That's the way, that's the relationship that David had. That's the relationship that Paul had. That's the relationship that every believer should have. We should be so hungry for more, more 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 and when you get the more guess what there's more waiting on the other side and when you get that there's more waiting on the other side because you cannot exhaust God's more would you go ahead and stand to your feet Do you know that there is only one time to quit crying out for more? You know when that is? When you get over there. <laughs> Until I get over there. I, I, I mean, that, that's it. We get there, we've made it, right? I don't know. Maybe even on, on the other side. I'm pretty competitive. Maybe I'm going to fight Terry to get closer to Jesus. I don't know. Because maybe I want more. More is more. And we can have it. Well, I hope, my, I, I told you this last, uh, when I got started on this. Man, if I can just, if, if I can just encourage, if I can just spark desire within you. You know, it, it, it's like putting that steak out on the grill. And you're sitting there going, oh, man. Can't wait to, can't wait to dig into that. I hope I, I hope the Lord is so real to you this morning. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And you can't wait to try him out. can't wait to have more would you bow your heads with me and we're gonna we're gonna pray this morning guys would you throw some music on for me up there every head bowed every eye closed Before we pray a closing prayer, I want to make sure everyone's right with God this morning. Is there anyone in here that would lift up their hand and say, Pastor, would you pray for me today? I want to make sure that everything is okay between me and Jesus. If the Lord were to come back today, I want to make sure that I'm right with God. Is there anyone you want to throw your hand up and we'll pray together? Pastor, pray. Pray for me. All right. 
How many of you would throw your hand up and say, Pastor, I want more. I want more than what I've got. And wherever I am at right now, Pastor, I'm willing and I want to go. I want to go from a two to a three. I want to go from a seven to an eight. I want to go to a whatever. But wherever I'm at now, I want to go to the next level. You ready to go there, church? Pray with me. Tell the Lord. Cry out to the Lord. Ask. Seek. Knock this morning. Tell God, I want more. Heavenly Father, Lord, you have encouraged us to taste and see that the Lord is good this morning. And Father, I have lived my life for the Lord and every day I think gets better. You are incredible. The Christian life is the, is the most incredible journey there is. Lord, I thank you that you have called us into so great a salvation. And Lord, I, I just pray for the church. I, I, I pray for uh, individuals in the church. But even as a church, God, I, I don't know where we're at in the Lord. But I just pray that you would take us up higher than what we are right now. Lord, move us closer to God, closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, may the cry of our heart be for more. Every day that we live, may we cry out to God, God, I need more. God, I want more. There is nothing that compares to you. So, Lord, I, I just pray that it, with, within the hearts of every, uh, every believer in this building, I pray that you would place a desire for more of God. I ask it in Jesus' name. If you want more, shout amen. All right, give me my hand clap of praise.